Good morning. Good morning. It's really, it's really nice for me to meet you. I assume that you are all here because you like science. Is it correct? You love science. Correct. And you want to know and you want to know how I became a scientist. So I also loved science when I was very young, much younger than you. When I was five, I already made my own experiments in my home. And because we were very poor, there were three families in four room apartment so the only place for me to make my experiments was in the balcony. And the first experiment that I remember, and I have evidence that it really happened, is trying to find out the distance from the floor to the ceiling of the balcony. So I took all the furniture that I could and put them together and didn't reach the, the ceiling yet. So I climbed. I thought if I stand, I will reach the ceiling, and then I will also add my own size. But instead of reaching the ceiling, I reached the ground floor. I fell down and broke my hand. I had 17 fractures. And for half a year, I was with a cast. So I have even an evidence that this experiment started, never finished, but started. So I made many more experiments at home. I don't, I don't want to tell you all about them. The one that is of interest, and I again have evidence, is I tried to find out the uh, balance between evaporation and motion in liquids. And I used water and kerosene. Kerosene is the material from which gasoline is being made, and it's very heavy and also flammable. So I, put, I had two glasses with a wire in between and started the experiment. My father was smoking, and my mother told him, only on the balcony. So you can imagine how this experiment uh, stopped by a fire. But uh, all this did not dis change my mind, and I continued with my own experiments. And then when I was at school, I also did experiments there. And I really liked, I really liked to understand nature, to understand how things happen, what, is the, what are the powers, and so on. But what I really, really, really wanted to be is a writer. I didn't know even that there is a profession called scientist. I thought that science is like a hobby. And I didn't think that anybody will pay salary for hobby. Writing books is also a hobby, but I liked it more. However, I was not good in writing. I was really very weak. Even I didn't like what I was writing. So I went to science. And I want to, to tell you about uh, the contribution of accidents or of unexpected events. When I wanted to study, I could not decide if I want physics or chemistry. But physics was already almost available for everybody that had a good, a good grade in physics in school. Chemistry, there were only 50 seats, 50 benches. And the year before me, there were more than 800 applicants. So, I thought that I should write that my highest priority is chemistry, because otherwise the chemist will not even look at me. And I was admitted to chemistry. 
Then when I was in chemistry, in the second year, we learned organic chemistry and biochemistry. And for biochemistry, there was a higher competition, less benches. So I wrote biochemistry and I was admitted. And then when I had to do my, my master's degree, there was only one, one seat in biophysics. And I applied and I was admitted. So all my, all my university life were dictated by the availability of seats. But I liked it very much. I really enjoyed it. <coughs> and I decided to take a PhD. And I want to tell you something about this PhD study because it has to do something with Bangalore, with this city, with India in general. At that time, in India was a giant scientist, one of the giants I ever met, a wonderful scientist, very clever, imaginative, and educating. His name was G. N. Ramachandran. How many of you heard his name? Nobody? Oh, you did. Do you know that he understood how proteins are made, how they fold, and what are the possibilities even before, before there were computers? He used just little models made of plastic or wires. And he, from there he invented or understood what is called Ramachandran plot. Some of you probably are using Ramachandran plot in your studies or will use when you will go into, into research. This is used until today and he, he discovered it in the 60s, it means 60 years ago, almost 70 years ago. Just a fantastic scientist. When I started my PhD studies, my idea, my, my project was to find out the structure of collagen. Collagen, everybody knows now what it is. It's the protein of the skin. At that time, was, it was hardly known, and it was hardly, a, a, people were hardly able to, to, understand, to understand how it's built. It is a triple helix. You all know the DNA double helix. So it, was a, it is a triple helix, and the scientists were using tails, of, of animals like tails of a, a kangaroo or of rats in order to determine the structure. And they use this, although the tail is not pure collagen, it's collagen with other proteins around it. One of the pioneers in collagen structure determination was G. N. Ramachandran. And when I decided that I want to do this uh, uh, study, it was because at the Weizmann Institute where I was, uh, models of collagen that had specific amino acid com composition were prepared by a professor called Ephraim Katsir. And this was supposed to give much better information about the structure because it was pure. So this was the reason I decided to go. And in the first day of my studies, I made a little fiber from the powder that I got as the model and took an X-ray diagram of it. And it was wonderful. It had almost 20 reflections whereas from the, from the tails and so on, there were between five to seven. So I measured them. It was on film at that time. Everything was on film. And I developed it, and I washed, I fixed it, I washed it, and I put it, hanged it to dry in the, in the room of, of the 
um, uh, place where we worked on, on uh, films, when we developed films. It was a long film. It's very long, almost 30 centimeters, not a small thing. But when I came in the morning, it was not there. I put it to, to, to dry at a late evening, and it was not there in the morning. So I became very worried. I measured it when it was wet, and I had some measurements, but not all, and not accurate. And I started to look for it, and I cleaned all the, the bottles and beakers and everything that was there in the room, and I still didn't find it. For three days, I worked on cleaning, and then I still didn't find it. I went to my supervisor, and I said, please forgive me, please forgive me. I lost my first result. You know what he said? It was such a good result that Professor Katsir, who prepared it, went to Madras to show it in a, in a conference. It means my first result was already in a conference here in India, not in Bangalore, but close. I think that Jain Ramachandran, I think that Jain Ramachandran was very impressed by this result. And when he went, actually first time that he left India, he went to Chicago where he got a joint appointment, he stopped in my, in my lab, in my office, and I was more, more or less four months student. He came to discuss collagen, and we had three days of discussion of the way to determine it but we didn't agree how to do it. He had his own way and I had my own way. I will not talk now about details. And it took me almost three years to determine the structure and even show that it is valid for many more uh, models of collagen. And it was different, little different from Ramachandran. Ramachandran's movement of the of the helix was this way, and I was this way. In, when I do it with my hand, it looks nothing, but in, in life it is different. Then we published our results, and at the end, after I already finished and was in America for postdoc, there was a meeting of the International Crystallography Society in New York, and Ramachandran was the chair, and he showed his, his structure. And then my supervisor showed our structure. And you know what happened? Ramachandran, the big Ramachandran, said to everybody, you know, her structure is correct. Did you meet ever such a gentleman, such a such a scientist, just a brave scientist, such a wonderful person, and also very, very, very clever. So for me, coming back to India, especially to Madras and to Bangalore, where he moved afterwards to, is a big, big story about the first contact I had with scientists from this country and I really appreciate a lot of them. So let's go back to you. You want to be scientists, please be prepared that not everything is going the way you want. Not everything is going the way you predict. Not everything is easy, and not everything is possible and the driving force for go going about all this thing and still winning is your curiosity. Work and advance along your curiosity. This should be your only, only um, measure that you have. Before I finish, I want to provide you with my own, with my own advice. I have only one advice. I'm sure you want to hear it. 
Even if you don't want, I will tell you. My advice is don't look for advices. Go after your thinking, your curiosity, you wish to understand. And my wish is that you will all be successful and that we, you will all love the work you are doing. Bye-bye for now and good luck. Thank you so much, madam. That was very inspiring to me, at least for sure. May I request all the children to stay back and listen to uh, one of the other great scientists that we have. And before we get into that, may I request uh, S. Rangappa to have a, a couple of words about the program. Professor Rangappa is, incidentally, it's interesting today that we have on dias uh, champions in chemistry, uh, from Professor Rao to uh, Dr. Rangappa, we're all chemists here. Rangappa is also the president of the Indian Science Congress Association. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Professor C.N.R. Rao, Bharata Ratna,